Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we are going to take a look at day one of Warhammer Fest Online. It's the Age of Sigmar stuff today, and I have to admit, I have to admit, they're off to a strong, a strong start. There is a particular model that was revealed yesterday that, frankly, I, I love. I absolutely love. Now, it is actually causing a little bit of a... Uh, it's maybe not controversial, what's the word? Like, there's split opinions, let's put it that way, but I really like it. But... We will start with, uh, I think, possibly the biggest reveal, uh, because the article goes in reverse order than the stream, if that makes sense, which you can still go and watch if you if you so desire. About an hour long, so not too bad. So first up, we have Broken Realms Kragnos, which apparently is going to bring the uh, bring the Broken Realms saga to a close. I did do a little test. I did prep work. I played both of these videos. Then I put them on YouTube to see what happened, and I got copyright claimed. No one else gets it but me! Someone's just got it out for my channel when it comes to this stuff. So I suggest you go and watch the videos. They are they are good, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with it. It's, it's just such a pain. So, Kragnos, the end of empires, who is free at last from his mystical bonds, the ancient god of earthquakes, slayer of dragons, and force of unalloyed destruction, has returned to rock the mortal realm. Where, mortal realms? Mortal realms, oh dear. So, he is the last survivor of an ancient race and is nothing like has been seen in Age of Sigma. It says we've seen, but I've not seen all that much because I've only just really got into it. Um, he's worshipped as a god by the forces of destruction and it's easy to see why. He towers over all but the Mega Gargans and the tales of his might have been passed down since the Age of Myth. He is a chunky boy. He is a very chunky boy. He's pretty big. Like, he's got some definite size to him. Could even be said that the lad's got some girth, let's be honest. I I quite like it. I do quite like this model. I'm not 100% on the face. I think the face is the one thing I'm kind of struggling with a bit. It just looks a bit... It kind of reminds me of a pug. And I, I know that I know pugs have got their fans, but to me, pugs are the ugliest dogs to, to exist, they are just outright hideous, not in a cute way. Also, they can't breathe. They've been interbred so much, they're just a walking disaster. His face gives me mild pug vibes, which I'm just, just not a fan of. But the rest of it, I actually really like. I mean, it's full-on centaur-style model. The armour on him is really interesting. It looks really different to pretty much anything that I think we've seen before for Age of Sigmar stuff. Um, there's... The, yeah, it's got like little details, and the overall shape and style of it is just very unique. It looks old, it looks ancient, and that obviously works really well if this is in fact some sort of ancient ancient entity that's been locked away for however many years. The horns are very over the top, but I quite like them. They look a bit kind of... they look almost untamed in a way. Like, there's not really a huge amount of logic to the growth. They just split off and grow and split off and grow. It's a cool look. I quite like it. The shield is badass. That is a cool-looking shield, even from this angle. There are there are other angles, but, yeah, the shield looks great. The hammer is... I find the hammer really interesting because it's like a mix of being quite raw and unrefined in terms of the shape of it. It's basically a lump with spikes attached to it. That's all it is. It's not like like an artisan weapon style kind of look. But at the same time, it's got all these little details like the uh, the haft of the weapon has got like a bit of artistry to it and there's little kind of almost like rivets and dots and stuff all over it. It's a nice mix of styles. He is of course standing on a cool rock, but in this case... This is this is a character who is known as the End of Empires and is the God of Earthquakes. I feel like you can absolutely let off let off a rock on this particular model, especially when it's a rock that is split from the power or the weight or just an innate aura that comes off this guy. The fact that that rock is like splitting from where his foot has hit it, that's a really cool touch. I really like that. That's a nice bit of like that's a nice bit of storytelling going on with the base. The fact that that detail is there, it, it just reinforces what this creature is. I really like that. I think it's well done. The body itself, I'd say, is fairly kind of... I don't know, like, fairly standard sort of centaur fare, which is going to be a bit of a theme, actually. It's not the only centaur-like thing we're going to see today. Um, but it's very heavily muscled. I like the, uh, like the kind of 
spike growth, the kind of bone that's poking through the skin. That's quite nice. Breaks it up, makes it a bit more... Makes it a bit more kind of... Um, almost monster-like. Makes it look a bit more unnatural, in a way. Overall, overall, I really like it. It's just the face that doesn't do it for me. It's just the face. The, I don't... I quite... You know, the beard's fine. The big mane of hair coming out the back. Quite like that. The chains around uh, around the arm that's holding the weapon look good. Again, the shield, just like from the, the back of the shield, looks good. It's just the face that isn't quite doing it for me. But we can see here, there is an alternative face. For me, that one is a little bit better. Really, it's it's a face that only a mother could love. <laughs> like, there's no, there's no way... It, it's just... Yeah, <laughs> or what? In one of the Terry Pratchett books, I for I forget which one it is. I'm pretty sure the librarian is described as having a face that only a lorry tire could love, and I'm getting that kind of vibe off this. But like that zoom in, you can see all of like the extra detail on the armor and the like the armor plates and the the chain links and stuff. And again, the shield looks really good. I mean, look at that! It looks so cool. It just has such a different feel, such a different character to like anything else I think that we've that we've seen for Age of Sigma, it feels like this feels properly properly unique. The idea of a centaur like creature is not anything new, but the implementation of it and the additions to the to the model in, in the form of the armor, the chains, the weapon, there is something much more ancient and primal about this. Yeah, I, I really, really like it. Also, the detail on the shield where the shield has like an, an embossed picture of Kragnos on it, with mountains beneath him, and the centre of the shield is the shield that the picture of him is holding on his shield. He's getting a bit Inception around here, but I really like that detail. I really like it. It's 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 been designed really, really well. It looks great. Little totem on the rock as well. Apparently those have just been cropping up all over the mortal realms as a, like, a herald of his return, which is, which is a cool little detail, but yeah, I, overall, overall, this is really solid. This is super solid. It's just, it's just, actually, the face looks better from the side. I'll give him that. The face does look better from the side. Head on, head on doesn't do it for me. But from that, that angle, actually, it's okay. I think it's because it seems, it's like a, a human-ish face. There's just enough features there to make it look like it could be a like a human face, but there's just enough animal features there to make it look like it could also just be an animal's face. And there's like a weird crossover going on that my I think my brain can't quite wrap itself around. But yeah, overall, overall, solid, solid model. Um, got a couple of uh, couple of interesting things. So the Icon of Destruction, so adds one to the bravery characteristic for any destruction units wholly within 12 inches of this model. And from what they said, I believe he can just be taken with any destruction force like like a mega gargan you can like slot him into anything which is destruction based so that's cool um and he also has a a massive shield which i think i think they said was like a two plus save in the in the stream i was trying to watch both times i've tried to watch it i tried to watch it last night whilst i was uh whilst i was cooking tea for children and doing all that stuff um and then i tried to watch it this morning and once again i got called in to assist with children so i've tried but so the uh the shield also has a thing where each time the model is affected by a spell or endless spell ability you can roll 3d6 and if the roll is greater than the casting value ignore the effects of that spell or endless spell ability on this model so he seems pretty damn tanky pretty damn tanky kind of inspirational at the same time um yeah i i, I really like the look of him i really like the look of him and the Broken Realms Kragnos book, they've said, is bringing bringing the, the the series to an end. Which I think, technically, I'm still not 100% on my AOS law. I'm still catching up. But I think that brings the Soul Wars storyline to an end as well, doesn't it? So maybe, maybe AOS 3.0 isn't all that unlikely from this point on. Because that's the entire... That's like that, that section like wrapped up, I believe, anyway. But yeah, I, I like it. I like it. There's also uh, there's also this lot which we have already seen. Still think they are great and will make fantastic inquisitors. Lord Croak is still absolutely solid. The Slanesh twins, again, they, I just feel like they've been absolutely nailing it with the 
AOS stuff recently. Uh, like for me, each of these is a super solid model. Maybe the occasional thing that might be like might want to change or mess with, but overall, just the like the the attitude and the silhouette and the the weirdness, especially when it comes to these two. I, I just think they're doing a really really good job of it. And you can see the absolute immensity of Kragnos there in that picture, where he makes orcs look <laughs> kind of small. In fact, to be honest, he makes ogres look kind of small, which is impressive. I think with the with the base that he's standing on, he looks to be maybe around Mega Gargan's height, maybe a bit, maybe a little bit shorter. But like that, that base adds a lot of height to him, and the horns really like they extend pretty far up uh so that is i mean that is a tall tall model it does look good though in the center of like a little horde like that it looks really good and, uh, and now for something a little different but not all that different in a way i mean that little thumbnail for the video gives you gives you some indication as to what the hell's going on with the <laughs> with the vampire stuff and good lord so it will start out strong because this I love. I'm assuming Lauka Vai, I could be totally wrong with the pronunciation of that, the Mother of Nightmares, that's a way better name anyway. So uh, vampires of the Avangori dynasty seek to slake their thirst on the very largest and strongest prey, and they're led to battle by the Mother of Nightmares. <laughs> See how I skimmed over just there? Uh, her twisted body rears up high over the battlefield, the splendour and horror of her form, representing the darkly irresistible nature of the Soul Blight Grave Lords. I... Love it. I absolutely love it. Now, this one... Okay. I've seen plenty of comments that are not on board with this, and I can 100% understand why, okay? I really like this. This is my favourite thing that they showed off yesterday, by quite some margin. But, but, I can absolutely get why, why quite a few people aren't on board. This is a weird model. This is, like, really, really weird. Because it, it's another kind of centaur-style creature. You've got, like, a humanoid torso on a either a animal or monster body. But normally, when you have something like that, there's a very distinct format it has, which is that you have, you know, too many legs and the normal number of arms is essentially how it goes. Anything between, like, four to six legs, you can kind of get away with, and it still looks like a centaurish creature, and we know what we're doing with that information. Like, you look at Kragnos, you know what Kragnos is. You don't have to spend any time, like, working out how the pieces join together. You don't need to kind of go, okay, well, if that's his torso, what part of the what part of the creature it, does that go on? Essentially, the torso, torso starts where the neck would start, and that's all you need to know. This is different. Like, severely different to that, because of the setup. Firstly... Generally speaking, when you have your kind of centaur-style thing, it is exactly that, a humanoid torso on an animalistic body of some kind. This is a humanoid torso on a humanoid body. Yeah, the legs are, like, differently shaped. They're more like, I'd say kind of like classic werewolf-style legs. But instead of having another pair of legs, you have a set of arms that are also kind of wings... Whether they're functional or not, I don't know. I I suspect I would prefer it if they weren't functional, I'll be honest. That I would actually prefer it if they weren't, because I think that would make more sense. They are so tattered and torn and like decayed. They look more like wings that have become weapons than wings that are used for actual flight. And I, I would kind of genuinely hope that that is the case. Um But this is this is a weird one because you have that humanoid you have that humanoid body stacked on top of another humanoid body. So instead of it rising out of where the neck would be on like a horse-style creature, instead it's rising out of the neck, but it's the neck of something that looks like a normal, like a normal humanoid thing. It takes a bit of getting used to because it's just not normally what you would expect from like this style of creature. And I absolutely understand if you look at that and go, I don't like that, it just looks weird. That's why I love it. I love how weird this is. It's so creepy. It's so off. It doesn't sit right. And it's because it doesn't sit right that I like it so much. It doesn't look like this is something that should exist, but there it is. And that kind of thing, 
I don't know, that just hits the spot for me. When it comes to weird and creepy creatures, something that you look at and go, I don't I don't understand how that works and I don't like it, that that's that is that's the standard for me. That's what I like. Yeah, I I really like this. There's some really nice detail with the armor. The armor looks really, really good. I like the fact that the sword is I mean, it's proportional to the rest of of the Mother of Nightmares. It's not like absurdly large or overblown it's not something that's absolutely ridiculous in terms of in terms of like just being a functional weapon it's it's just a sword but you don't need anything more than just a sword when you've got something that is this wrong going on it's really i just really like it i just think it's really well done but as i say as i say i know there will be those of you who are sitting there looking at this going but but her body's coming out of the top of another body that where the head should just be. This is weird. I don't like it. I totally understand. I totally get you. But yeah, it just this 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 is the kind of thing that I like. So oh, I do like it though. Oh god, the head also really good head, really solid face on this model. She looks so cold and sneering and just. Just like everything is beneath her, I really like the facial expression they've gone for. The fact that the hair is kind of like shaved and and like shorter on one side and longer on the other, I quite like the kind of asymmetry of that as well. That's that's a nice touch. Um, little things like, in a way, it is kind of funny that her armor has been designed specifically to take her hair into account, but <laughs> I actually quite like that. Again, something else that I really like a lot is like asymmetry in models especially asymmetry in in like monstrous creatures and stuff. I, I don't know. Again, it's just a personal preference thing. I don't really know why I like it so much, but I, I kind of, I really like the fact that on this, you've got this kind of raised collar on the, like the side of the body that's holding the sword, which also kind of coincides with the fact that she's got longer hair on the other side. It's just something about it that that, that just works for me. She's also got a massive long tail, as we can see, which just adds to the weird inhuman nature of it. I think as well, the fact that this... It's not hair. Like, there's hair on the kind of animal part of her, the monster part of her, I guess, but it's like tufts of hair. It's almost like a... It's like a werewolf and a dragon had some sort of weird love child, but there's also a vampire in there as well. It's a really weird design, but it just it just does it. Just does it for me. You can see the detail on the armor there as well, which I, I think is really nicely done. It's really well done. It's just such a good model. It's such a good model. It's 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 definitely one of those ones where I can look at it and go, I can understand why other people wouldn't like this, but I absolutely do. I you know, I I get it, but also little things like you can see the armor like it doesn't go all the way round the back so she's got this like plate on the front but then there's a strap and you can see the uh see her her like her like skin so it's not even like plate that's wrapped all the way round it's oh it's, it's so good it's so creepy and weird it's so creepy and weird but the thing is i like creepy and weird so how could i not like it that being said there is an alternative build for this so this is <laughs> As they say, a hideous amalgamation of bat, drake, and human or body, Vi is nevertheless possessed with a sliver of self-control and even conscience. She remembers the pride she felt as a fierce warrior queen, and she hasn't allowed herself to succumb completely to her instincts. So, yeah, I, it's it's kind of cool lore as well. So, as they say, you can also build this kit as a Vengorian Lord, a new leader option for the Soul Black Grave Lords. I saw a lot of people saying that they actually preferred this to the Mother of Nightmares, I don't. <laughs> I I don't like this version as much. And I think I don't like this version as much because of the way that he's... Of the way he's, like, seated on... Well, not seated, because it's all the same creature. But, like, his upper torso, not the, not the monstrous torso, the more kind of humanoid torso, I don't know. It, it looks more static it looks like he's twisted in a weird position it just doesn't quite have the same impact for me it just doesn't look quite as intimidating and i couldn't really i don't know i'm not really sure 100 percent why i could like if i could tell you why that is but there's something about the pose on this that just 
does not hit the same way. Um, that I mean, that being said, that like the the details and stuff, I still like. Like the armor still looks really good. The sword is still really nice. That kind of bat wing collar coming up for uh, around his head that looks really good. The details are all super solid. It's just the pose itself doesn't quite doesn't quite do it. It's not quite as uh, impactful for me as her pose. Yeah, there's just there's just something about I think that pose more than anything else that that has uh, that has more of a more attitude. I guess I think it looks more commanding. It looks more commanding. It looks a little bit more uh, like superior as well. Which, if you look like that, and you are that size, I feel like you can kind of get away with feeling like you're somewhat superior because, well, yeah, <laughs> surely you would. Absolutely massive nightmare creature. You're gonna feel slightly better than other people, aren't you? I do like it though. I do like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. So we also have. Uh, we also have. Radikar the Beast. Now this one is interesting to me because I, I I saw this and immediately went, well that was probably an expansion for Curse City, right? Because <laughs> in Curse City you fight Radikar the Wolf, and I mean I'm assuming there is an option for him to die. Except plot twist, he didn't. He's right here. He is now Radikar the Beast. He's significantly bigger. He's still got his wolf cloak, although the wolf cloak is the same size. So you can see how much he's grown. Like he is, he is properly piled on the pounds. Also gained those uh, digi 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 the backwards legs. I, I don't know what the word is now. I just keep forgetting it, and I can't remember how to pronounce it. But he's got like the kind of werewolf style legs as well. Of course, makes sense for him because look at him. I really like the uh, the shoulder guard, like that kind of shoulder plate going on, the interlocking like metal like pattern thing that's happening there that looks really cool that's a really cool design you've also got so much potential there for demon prince conversions <laughs> like they've pretty much handed you a solid looking demon prince that you could get a bit get a couple of wings on you know chuck some weapons on nice nice they've 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 done a good thing with this the little lads on the base around him they look okay they're fine but they kind of pale in comparison to Radikar himself, who looks like an absolute beast now. Which makes sense, because he is called Radikar the Beast. I just, I really feel like this, this just, it just has Cursed City expansion written all over it. And I don't know whether that was originally intended to be the, uh, like, the direction for this model. And they have just decided to go just with a straight up AOS release with it first. I don't know. But it feels like a continuation of that story. It feels like, oh, you thought you killed Radikar the Wolf. Well, guess what? You need to go back into Wolfenkarn because uh, Radikar the Beast has shown up. He is bigger, he is tougher, he is hardier. It just feels like that. And, I mean, that may not be true. That may just be wild conjecture that is massively inaccurate. But that's, that's like, my first thought with that. I was like, well, that's clearly an expansion that they're now long, not like no longer going to do, unfortunately. But we'll see. We'll see. There's a lot of nice details, though. That kind of overlapping armor that he's got, where the, all the different, like, individual strips of metal have been kind of weaved together, it's such a cool look. It really is. It's kind of repeated around the uh, around the waist as well. Not quite to the same level of complexity. There's also a nice little, like, wolf head thing going on there, too, which I really, really like. Super solid. Again, super solid. The un like the, the Soul Blight Gravelord stuff that they showed off, overall, I think is just pretty damn good. So as they say, uh, rumours of Radikar the Wolf's demise have been greatly exaggerated. Now known as the Beast, his animal rage has been unleashed. He bides his time, prowling, shyish, and, and plotting revenge. Swollen with power and corrupted in form, he has retained his animal cunning, lust for power, and thirst for blood, and the wolf, pe wolf pelt cloak, which honestly fits better now. It does, but only because he's absolutely massive yeah that's that's pretty solid pretty solid do like it although he has lost the hat which is a shame although then again his head is so much bigger than <laughs> than it was before you'd have to get the hat enlarged wouldn't he now following on from that we have belladama volga who is first of the viacos and uh <laughs> this is 100 percent elena tyrell on a wolf <laughs> I mean, it really, it really is. I think Mikey uh, from Hellstorm 
uh, pointed that out. And uh, I just can't unsee it now. I just can't unsee it. She's got wolf legs poking out from under her dress. The fact that there is essentially a like a werewolf grandma going on here, I'm I'm all in. I'm I'm a hundred percent on board. What a great idea! Genuinely, what a great idea! She's got them the massive hat, similar, of course, to uh, to Radicar's old hat. The uh, the like the feathers coming out from that massive that massive kind of fur cloak look really cool. The wolves themselves look pretty solid to me. There's maybe a little less detail on the fur than I would than I would like. Maybe it could just be that with it all being I don't know. I, I don't know that that's necessarily any different to how they've done at wolves in the past. I should go I need to go and have a look at some space wolf wolves after after and uh, and just compare and contrast. It feels a little less detailed in some respects, but I don't know that I'm being fair with that with that comment. Because overall there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Like when you look at her dress, like all the kind of uh what is it? Like frogging and stuff going down the front. That's all sculpted in. That looks super good. The kind of frayed, tattered end of the dress as well. The sword has got like chunks missing out of it. It looks moth-bitten. Like her outfit looks properly old and moth-bitten. Which is a really nice touch. And it has all that detail in there. I think that's... Again, I think it's a super solid model. I Honestly, this first day, they've absolutely... They've done it like a proper good job. A proper good job with this Age of Sigmar stuff. They really have. Now, sticking with the wolf theme, we also have new direwolves. And I really like some of these. I really like some of them. Um, I, yeah, I, there's a couple that don't quite do it for me. But overall, I think like as, as a unit, they look super solid. Uh, but yeah, there's a couple that don't quite... Don't quite... Don't quite do it for me. These two, quality. I really like these two. The uh yeah, the the open wounds, like the the way the skin's peeling back and showing the bone underneath looks super good. The added little detail like where it is over the ankle joint in the paw there on uh, on the top one, that's that's really nicely done. I think they've done a really good job with that. Not a huge fan of the drool coming out of the mouth. I think it's just a bit too thick and and like I don't know, like ropey. I just it, it's not quite... I have a dog that does a lot of drooling, and it doesn't look anything like that. <laughs> I mean, these are direwolves, so maybe they do have, like, horrendously thick spit. But, oh, God, let's just stop talking about that. These guys, again, super solid. The Where the, like, musculature is exposed, I'm, I'm hoping that that's sculpted on. Although I don't know that it is. I think that might be painted. It would have been nice to have, like... It'd be nice if it was, like, ridged, if the plastic was ridged there, so that it's easier to paint. Because you could do that with a bit of dry brushing, um, if the detail is sculpted in. If not, then it would take more effort. It's perfectly doable, but it would just make things a little bit easier. And I feel like these are these models are where those little details... They're going to be what dictates whether the paint job shines or not, I feel like. I, I These have, to me, that air of... They will either look great because you have put the time into just getting every little bone picked out and making sure you've shaded all the recesses and you know you've really you've really taken care to to highlight those gaps in the skin and the flesh. If you don't do that, there's a risk they're going to look absolutely naff. And I mean, models like that I think have to exist. There have to be ones where. You just you make the model look as good as you possibly can when you're sculpting it, and it's up to everyone else to do their bit when it comes to painting to make it look okay. But I feel like these these have that air of it would be very easy to make them look not good, and that that's scary when it comes to painting something. These two I really really like. <laughs> They're so it's so grim. I mean, just the total lack of flesh and and hair on on the one of them on his head it's just a skull just a skull i don't even know that he's got eyes in either socket i can't see an eye on the other side but it's just gross it's so badly decayed like the string of intestine hanging down is horrible i love the detail of the crow like picking some flesh off it 
it's grim. It is super grim. It's so good. And yeah, the other one is it is very similar. I like the fact that half of like you've got that kind of natural hair and skin around one eye and then the other one is just totally exposed with a big like wound showing bone through it. Super good. Super good. Overall, overall that's a solid unit. Like I, I have my I have my favourites when it comes to the individual wolves, but as like a pack, again, I think they've just done a solid job of it. Plus the uh plus uh <laughs> Elena Tyrell can also command said wolves. She can just command die wolves directly, apparently. So that's nice. <laughs> oh, it looks so good. And then uh, nice, nice group shot there as well. See, in the context of like the skeletons, and we've got the Dead Walker zombies that we saw ages ago, the Blood Knights, the, like the Mother of Nightmares, even amongst other undead horrors, just looks horrifying. Like, even in the context of everything else in that picture. She still looks the most horrific, and that's that's what I'm loving about that model. It feels like no matter what you put her next to, she just is going to look absolutely horrendous. It's just, it's what I want. It's what I want. Nightmares. Actual nightmare. Living nightmares. That's what I'm after, and that's what she provides. So, I'm happy. And aside from a uh, <laughs> another, another mobile game, um, yeah, that's it. So... <sighs> This one, Soul Arena, seems to be one of those ones where you set up your stuff and then it just fights automatically without you doing anything. If you like that type of game, then maybe you want to check it out. I have to admit, I have absolutely no interest in it at all. I just don't... I. It just leaves me cold. I'm just not bothered in the slightest. Um, but yeah, you, you can check it out if you like it. I just, it's just like... I just saw it and went... Yeah, and that was the entire reaction. So, but you know, I, we're gonna go back to oh, we gotta go back to this. I know that there'll be some of you who are like, no, show Kragnos at the end. Damn you! What the what the hell is this? It's just this is this is something I would make. That's why I like it so much. I, I've just I've just I've just twigged really. But I'll be honest, this is something that I'd do. I, I can't help but love it because I'm pretty sure I've thought about doing something very similar before. Just so creepy and messed up. Yes, inject it directly into my veins. Anyway, that is day one of Warhammer Fest. Loads of stuff to look at, some really good models, some really nice sculpts. And uh, yeah, a pretty strong start, if you ask me. Pretty strong start. I'm looking forward to uh, the 40k one, which I believe is today and Friday, right? So we will have more stuff to look at tomorrow morning. I hope you have an enjoyable week, and I hope that you uh, you enjoyed this look back through what we saw yesterday. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Any favourites, anything you really didn't like. In the meantime, feel free to click all the things, Patreon, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like, don't click it if you don't want to. And uh, as always, there's an affiliate link in the description down below, which you can use to support the channel. I leave it in your capable hands. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.